Let go of the past and manifest the reality you desire. It's time to expand your consciousness and create a new enlightened transformational you by raising your vibrational frequency. We will talk about ETs, light ships, the ascending human, our ascending planet, visitations, and first conscious contact upon our new fifth dimensional Earth. Welcome to Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness. It's time to activate a better you by embracing the white light of Source. Of source, of source, of source. Now your host and Universal Guide, Joanna L. Ross. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Joanna with Universal Unity and Universal Light Wisdom and Healing Centers. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'm happy to be back. I was away last week and um, we were visiting some family, but I'm happy to be back and what a profound um, week it has been. Um, with energy, with our solstice energy, with our solstice unfolding. So thank you to our special um, um, our special gathering that we had this week on the 21st for winter solstice. And I hope that everyone had a chance to take time out and absorb and just be present with the divine and heavenly offerings of the 21st. And we always move within a couple of days of all of these special alignments, um, whether it's an equinox or a solstice or a full moon or new moon, um, changing of the seasons, if you will. So just know that you can take that time um, today and this evening as well, because it is the 23rd, um, and the 23rd still vibrates within the solstice energies and the solstice celestial offerings. And there's many things that um, will come forward in today's divine offering within the heavenly councils. Um, I was preparing very early this morning, and I've got about 12 pages that um, um, we've written in channeled form. And we're going to put them through in various recordings and other written posts, because it's profound energy that really, for me, it feels like a culmination, of a, a review, if you will, a reflection, which is perfect, because today um, equals the number nine. And the nine, for me is a vibration of a highest vibrational frequency or signature, if you will, of singularity. Before we move into the uh, and embrace the, the, um, the openness and the unity of our one plus God self, and that's the number 10. But this number nine is our mastery story, the highest vibration of who we are in our singular form, therefore allowing ourselves to step beyond the veils of all limitation and illusion and separateness and step into the unity and unification and reunification of our universal oneness, our universal wholeness, our reunification with Mother, Father, God, with all that is. And so today's, so today's theme, and within this solstice energy, <clears throat> and in the beautiful gathering that we had this week, it was a really um, uh, a moment of, um, um, it was really a hiatus, if you will, of the gathering of various energies and the gathering of various life lessons and soulful lessons, timeline lessons, that many are now awakening to as they move into their universal expansiveness through the human and earthly ascension that we are all shifting within. The grounds beneath our feet are all shifting within the light and codations moving through each of us in our own unique perspectives, in our own unique awakenings, and in our own unique healings of those awakenings. And this solstice energy for me was quite, um, it was quite powerful in the way of our reunification and understanding of the sacred triad. Um, the sacred triad means many things and it can mean many things and it is supposed to mean many things. But in this particular vibration, we're going to allow the sacred triad to be um, the divine balance of mother, father, God with the son and the daughter. Um, and each of us carry that sacred triad. Within this sacred triad is also our divine complement that is the equal balance of our unique energies, each and every one of us individually and unique. And in this unity, in this story that we're unfolding within, we've realized and we've come to the culmination, we've come to the mastery in our singularity vibration and truly owning and truly creating that sense of self-passion and self-purpose and self-grace within the passion of our human experience, within the passion of our human joy to be human, to be on this earthly ride, within this earthly ride. And that's what our topics for today are. And we're going to cover a lot of information. Whatever I don't cover in this show, um, it is very, very um, key and important um, in the human ascension um, paradigm. So if we don't cover it within the show today, 
we will be doing a full written expose and excerpt of um, these channelings because for me it was just poignant and I just kept writing poignancy after poignancy of these epiphanies that I've gained through my own awakening through every single person, <laughs> every single soul family member, every child within my experience, every remembrance um, that has come forward through me. And it's truly about the human journey in and of itself. Our return to experiencing the passion within our human experience. And that's what our topics are today. The passionate human experience. Our return to living in passion for being human. Our return to being passionate and graceful within this human experience. And this will take you to a whole new expansiveness of your mastery. It will allow you to see and sit back and let go of the worry and let go of the upset and let go of the stress. When we allow you to remember, A, what you already know within, and B, allowing you to see it and feel it and perceive it in new ways. For remember that I am, Joanna is a vibrational teacher and healer. And therefore there are vibrational encodations in the words that we speak. There are vibrational offerings within the sacred soul tribe and the sacred soul gathering and we prepare the room beforehand. We prepare the etheric chamber beforehand. And your higher selves and your teams and your celestial teams and all that makes you up is constantly in a mode of preparation and release and growth and cycles of evolution. And so in every moment, you can see all things is perfect. All beings is perfect. Divinely God required. And so as we spiral within these these energies of living and remembering and igniting the passion within to be human. The grace that is found and experienced within this passion. And how passion and how the joy of feeling passionate of who you are. The awakening of the God self, the passion of the God self is the catalyst to all light fields, all timelines that we're all co-creating in this now moment. And you find grace within all moments, regardless of what that may appear or how it may be defined <clears throat> by any one perspective that you're coloring it through or a judgment or a belief that you're coloring it through. Because as you find the passion to be human and truly soak within this passion, understanding what passion means for you and to accept the whole physical body without judgment, without ridicule, without um, exception, as many as of, of us have. And we've created such distance and separation with our physical bodies. And much of the rebalancing that we have done this year in particular has been a rebalance of the physical body in and of itself. And we're bringing back into play, back into our innate behaviors and our terms and our words that we're using, the awareness of the balance of male and female within our daily paradigms, within our daily thoughts and behaviors, the words that we use, how we behave with one another, how we behave with our children and our families. Because the balances of the male and female are so very crucial to the multidimensional bodies that have required our healing, and it will continue to be so. And why it's been such an epiphany to move through these awakenings and these remembrances, because it allows me to see things that unfold in my daily life. <clears throat> and I put them into a gracious perspective. I, I, I allow grace to be lived through those challenging moments that I've defined as challenging. But it's brought me to a more expansive perspective <laughs> and passion about who I am within it. And these will be one of those, this show will be one of those shows in which you may feel the urge and the need to listen to over and over and over again. For there are vibrational encodations, there are vibrational remembrances in what we will bring forward. So allow yourself the fluidity and the allowance to do so. Have that be okay. <laughs> Remember, letting go of all judgment and self-ridicule or whatever appears that you may not be getting anything, but you are, you truly are. As we said, you're constantly in a state of evolution and movement. Today's topic is passionate human experience, and we're going to go far and wide, but these are things you already know. These are concepts you already know at the cellular level of all that you are. We will explore these concepts in hour one. In hour two, we're going to move within these same concepts, but we're going to bring it into healing of the human family, which is one of our light center. It's one of my passions, 
is to bring the whole human family into our syllabus, into our circle of light, into our communion and sacred circle. And we'll give you a few symbologies along the way. For all of these words are ringing true and highly vibrational to the cellular remembrances that will be ignited in this conversation. This is why all of these shows offer you vibrational healings. All of these shows and sacred gatherings offer you the sacred vibrational remembrances of what is required to be brought in and loved and made whole and healed so that you may find greater passion for all that you are as a God child, for all that you are as a universal being sent through time and space, cosmic dimensional realities, cosmic dimensional threads to be exactly where you are right now, to feel, to sense, to hear, to be all that you are in all your gorgeousness. So let's begin. Allow your feet to be grounded within the sands and soils of Gaia, dear lighted ones, for we are creating new light fields of potentiation. We are allowing your higher selves and we are allowing all the celestial teams within the etheric chambers and the divine heavenly councils. Thank you, ascended masters. Thank you, archangels of tone and sound that we work with so vibrationally, so purely and so innately in all that we do in the words that we offer and the musings that we transfer. For remember, all things are in constant motion. All things are in constant ignition of love. Are they not? When a thought is moving through the essence of all that you are, it never stops, dear lighted ones, constantly in motion within the web of consciousness. And how as masters you have awoken, dear lighted ones, as the adults that you are, masters of light that you are, light warriors, light healers, light keepers, light workers, however you define yourself to be a child of God. Constantly evolving, constantly in cycles, constantly in motion. As to are your children, are they not? The idea to understand passion within the human experience is to know that there are always movements, expansiveness within all things, expansiveness within the state of being that you are. Passion is found within your ability to create stillness and centeredness within your being. To expand the essence of all that you are, your multidimensional gorgeousness in physical form, emotional form, mental form, etheric form, and all that you are beyond that. And align it with breath, align it with God encodations, the sacred geometry that exists within all things, the omnipresence, the web in which we sit. Visualizing the pillar of light that allows you to spiral in your innateness and in your centeredness and grounding within your own self clarity, your own self knowing about who you are as a human, who you are as a light worker as a human, who you are as a God seed as a human, the expression of your godliness in human form to come forward in your own unique way. We allow these passions to be understood in our human experience, in our human planetary ascension experience. What does passion mean to you, through you, for you? Our experience within this earthly totality has been quite limited. We've seen ourselves as strictly physical beings. We have seen ourselves as strictly limited in every way, with no celestial family, with no universal family whatsoever. We have never been taught these things. We have never been shown these things. We have been, in a way, hidden from all aspects of our universality. Our passions have been quite limited in a way to exactly what we see in the mirror every day. And we bring forward these new understandings so that it may ignite passion within you. It may inspire something within you, the God spark that spirals as that quantum catalyst particle of God light. And it may come forward through you as the rainbow conduit that you are so that the light particles live through you in every way. Moving through your words, moving through your new expansive musings and concepts and beliefs about who you are, what you exist within and what exists within you. And that all those around you find just by your essence of being, just by your illumination, all paths are cleared through this new passionate view about who you are. For we have been awakening over the years and this being a number nine vibration, we've been awakening through eons of time, if you will, timelines after timelines of awakening 
understanding our different perspectives about what God is, who God is, who we are within that structure, who we are within all of creation. And as we remove and as we release limitation, we see ourselves and we awaken within new feelings and new sensations, new essences vibrationally, awakening within, allowing us to expand and seek, seek greater expansiveness in our beliefs, our truths, our oneness, our separateness. For the seeking of anything allows us to expand within it. Whether you're seeking within what separation means, whether you're seeking within what oneness means, you'll come up with the same answer. They'll cross, they'll intertwine, just as your divine complement intertwines with you, Mother, Father, God, do in that sacred triad. We've come through in our awakening, in our planetary ascension, in our human ascension, and we've discovered new passions. For when we have an awakening through a dream of a celestial being we've never seen or met before, and yet we understand that it exists somehow, somewhere, and a quantum particle of God awakens within us and spirals through the chakras. As those God particles spiral through the chakras, allowing you to question all that you are, what you exist within, and what exists within you, those vibrational particles that were left dormant, that were left shaded, that were left unhealed or unheard or unacknowledged, start spiraling in their awakening. That spiraling in awakening raises it to a higher frequency. Or because it's been activated, it's already been raised to a higher frequency through the seeking within, through the understanding that you're more than you thought, through your delight to be passionate about walking through a forest. Those quantum moments of sacred play ignite passion within, ignite the quantum God particles to spiral new questions, new musings for the further seeking within. Ignites new passion of love that you hold within all life. For as you discover and you seek within, you discover yourself within that thing that you're seeking. Remember, quantum physics, as you observe one thing, that one thing changes based on your observation of it. Your frequency state of it, of you, within it. The passion to experience love held within any one thing, within all life, is why you are here. For we have forgotten that, as we said in the beginning of our summation. We have forgotten about the passion of why we chose to come here. Why we chose to be a part of the divine human family that we are a part of. Why we chose to move through space and time, through the density, through the reality veils, through the illusions that we've co-created and self-manifested. For within the seeking within, for within the quantum ignitions of all moments of our awakening, there are those moments in which graciousness overflows. And that graciousness is the understanding of love within itself, of you within it all. That is grace. Grace is experiential. As you experience yourself within separateness, and you allow yourself to seek yourself within it, and how you have held judgments, and how you have held yourself within judgment, and how you allowed yourself to feel separate or isolated. And as you seek within it and love it, and you activate those quantum Akashic memories or cellular memories, not necessarily analyzing why, but just bringing it into love and make it whole, the moment that you do causes that graciousness to overflow within you and your heart opens. That Christed vibration, illumination, that light body opens up. These are the alchemic transmutations. This is the alchemic shifting, if you will, of what happens alchemically from physical to light body. We're explaining it in terms and words that you know, in experiences that move through your everyday life so that you may Take heed, take pause, and take breath. For creating your presence within the stillness of the grace that is presented in every moment. For you to be reminded 
of your passion within this experiential journey. How truly divine are we in all moments, dear lighted ones, as we gather as soul members. And many of you are feeling your universality open up in which you can sense other aspects of you on other dimensions. And you can feel the soul threadings from a myriad of dimensions sending you vibrational love, sending you unconditional support and empowerment for this ride. And we often get caught up in the busyness. We often get caught up in what has been termed and coined as mundane life, in which we tell you once again, it is far from the truth. There is nothing mundane about you or any aspect of your daily life. And we hope to inspire you with such divine vibrations of love and expansiveness about who you are and the vastness that you exist within and that exists within you so that you may take pause and embrace about all the passions and the quantum particles that exist within you that you may ignite in any one moment about who you are within this divine journey of love. And we take you to a visualization, dear lighted ones. For now that you are awake, now that you are conscious about your multidimensionality, now that you are conscious and you are aware of your universality, now that the world in and of itself, our collective human family is awakening in every moment to greater potentials and opportunities of our own universality. We can talk about these things in such a safe and exciting way, can we not? You can go forward and have divine sacred conversations and musings and communions with those you never thought you could, but now here they are awakening right before your very eyes, asking you questions, allowing you to muse with them in their journeys and their dreams and their visions. For the God essence is moving through all of creation. Make no mistake about that. And everyone will be touched by it and everything will be touched by it. And why we can allow greater passion and greater excitement in every moment, can we not? Let go of what we're shown, let go of what appears to be, for you can shift your perspective and your alignment in any moment and make it magical and miraculous. This we know to be true. For you are the particle of passion sent forward through all space and time through the most farthest reaches of the cosmos to experience density on behalf of Mother Father God. You are the passion of the divine in physical human form. And how may you breathe this in and live it? And as you find the stillness within your graciousness, those God particles are ignited by the passion to be you for your unique encodings and your unique gifts can only be inspired by the passion that you seek within yourself. You are your own passion. You are your own journey. You are your own gift. Why God sent you forward, why you agreed. And this visualization will allow you to feel it and sense it in brand new ways, dear lighted ones. And as you feel your feet firmly grounded within the sands and soils of Gaia, and you open and you activate the pillar of light of all that you are, calling forth the spirits of the heavens, calling forth the spirits of the infinite and eternal counsels of light and love through you, through breath, you visualize the beautiful sacred geometry moving through all things and all ways and all colors and all sounds and all tones. And the omnipresence of you comes to life. And you can feel those sacred threadings of vibrational passion moving through every thread that you are connected with in every dimensional reality, every dimensional thread. Sparks of divine golden light. And you can feel the electromagnetic zaps along your skin and your skull and your vibrational fields. And in this visual alignment, allow yourself to come into a beautiful, heavenly crystalline environment. Beautiful clouds of crystalline opalescent colors. 
and you feel your feet still grounded within the sands and soils of Guy and your universal presence and your multidimensional bodies are sensing her heartbeat of crystalline magnitude. Dun, 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 dun. Feeding through you, nourishing through you, igniting her passion through you, feeling the passionate threads of your soul essence through all of creation threading through you. The passion from the archangels and the crystalline Christed essence through all corners of the cosmic web that we are woven within. Dum, 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 dum. Beautiful crystalline heartbeat of Mother, Father, God working in balance in tandem within you. Dum, 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 dum. Sparks of gold and God consciousness running through every vein. And within this crystalline environment, you see off in the distance moving towards you, beautiful light energy beings. And these beings can look in any way that you desire. And you can see the form and the outline of somewhat humanoid form, if you will, but they're taking light. As they're moving towards you, you see the beautiful colors shift and change like a beautiful song of light and color. The beautiful hues of creation moving through each and every one of them. Although they are unique, although they are beautiful in their uniqueness and their requirement, you can see that they're all threaded together for a divine purpose, divine soul song as they're moving towards you. You can feel the unity and the hum and the unison that they offer you. And you see that they are masters of light. They're familiar to you. And now behind them coming into focus is the divine and heavenly mother, father, showing you this beautiful sacred triad of family, of light, of communion. And you have an innate knowing that this was the designing meeting. This was the, the soulful gathering in which you communed with the highest masters of your choice to plan out your divine earthly soul blueprint. And with the masters and the angelic soul teams, you designed those that you would contract divine soul lessons with and through and for and by. And these team members, these team masters of light from every dimension, from every corner of our omnipresence, coming together in collaboration. And these masters lay out upon a beautiful crystalline table, a map, if you will. And you see beautiful crystalline fragments and lines and dots and spiraling symbols and sacred geometry, multidimensional. And you can see through each dimension, through every layer, through every veil. This map is a soul map of every lifetime, of every dimension, of every form that you have right here, right now, on every thread, on every God offering. Masters upon masters, angelic teams upon angelic teams, divine celestial brothers and sisters, the heavenly mother father overseeing it all, councils and healers, intelligences and wisdoms, soul threads upon soul threads. Within each incarnational lifetime on any star system on any planet, each having its own team of design, within the soul blueprint that it carries. Each team, each team has its own set of celestial beings assisting in that incarnational lifetime. Infinite, mind-boggling. This is your unique soul blueprint for this divine earthly experience. Your unique expression. Your unique godliness. And how it was mapped out through the intricacies of love, the light of profundity shown with your unique encoding, dear lighted ones. Your unique soul vibration, the unique song that was breathed as you came into carnation at your very first understanding of what life was. Breathed by Mother, Father, God by a song and the tones that you carried and the sounds that you carried 
a spirit at golden essence. And in the passion to experience love in all ways, God in all things, God in all beings, God in all things. From that passion, you began to incarnate here and there and there and here and over there and up there and across there and over there. Here and there and everywhere, right here and now, here you are. Through passionate breath, through passionate thought, through passionate excitement. And these teams and these masters and these angelic councils and brethren from across the cosmos in every form, beyond what you can imagine, threaded within it all are you. Every threading, every soul, every spirit, every individuation that you have carried, that you carry in this now moment. Can you allow yourself to breathe? The vastness and the beauty that you carry. Are you sensing the excitement to be you, dear lighted ones? For in all realms, in all star systems, you knew this divine and heavenly, monumental, profound moment of earth and human transitioning, of earth and human evolution, threaded with all galactic star systems, threaded with all galactic star councils and mastery councils, archangels, God particles in every form. And somehow in our daily life, we forget our profundity. We're asking you to remember how important and how required you are. For your divine earthly soul blueprint, dear lighted ones, was nothing short of miraculous in its planning, in its careful considerations of those that you would contract with and that would contract with you, every person that crosses your path, every family member, every friend, every animal, every flora, every fauna, every aspect of life that you experience, that you observe. So utterly profound. And can you feel the gift of this passionate display of love that you are offered to remember, to reignite, to bless with creation in your awareness of this, in your reawakening and remembrance of this. And your expansive breath grounds and anchors these new musings of your vastness, of your potentiality here in human form. To know that your soul threadings from every corner of our omnipresence, feeding you synchronicities and cues, feeding you the aliveness of excitement, feeding you the visions and the dreams of your vastness, feeding you the expansiveness of your eternal godness. However we term it, however we offer it, for it is infinite, it is eternal as are you. Can you feel the passion, dear one? Can you feel the mother, father within you breathing? Inspiring life. Inspiring your active participation within it. To engage. To entangle. To open your heart and just love. And in your passionate acceptance about who you are, in your unique acceptance and acknowledgement of your profundity and your requirement in this now moment as a human being, awakening to your godliness and your expansive Christed essence, 
All things expand. All timelines affected. All now moments, all oceans are calmed and silenced. All vibrations in the mountains return to a peaceful hum. And the sands and the soils wash over with divine godly love. And there is no need to shake and stir. For we get it. We can accept ourselves as so divinely, universally belonging. A requirement in every way. Opens the passion of the divine Christ at heart. The sacred triad of Mother Father living through you. Emulating rainbow colors never seen before. Inventiveness never thought of in the ways that it will be. For your passionate Christ at heart has come here for a reason, dear lighted ones, make no mistake about it. And as you open your divine sacred heart and allow yourself to receive the divinity that is being offered in all moments, there's never a moment you are not offered this. And you open with divine graciousness to feel you. Without exception, without excuse, to be authentically you, to gift your authentic gifts, to sound your authentic song, to be that authentic bridge of rainbow light as all things live through you, as you seek the graciousness within all moments, as you seek the graciousness and love within all beings, for it is you coming to life in new ways through allowance through passion, through exploration of this divine journey of being human. And we remember through our own innate passionate awakening and awareness and acknowledgement and engagement and entanglement. Simultaneously, make no mistake about this, Gaia awakens with us in her passion. Simultaneously threading with us through the consciousness web that we are now aware of that we are now communicating with the divine intelligences of all things. And I will give you a personal vision and a personal experience that I had as validation of this consciousness intelligence of all things. As we've talked about before in my experience when I went to Japan and the experiences I've had with nature consciousness and the elemental consciousness, Gaia consciousness and the Elohim, and all God consciousness and the webbings that are being enhanced and magnified and amplified with the God encodations of our ascension, with God light sacred encodations of our moment for moment breath work, our moment for moment self acceptance and self love. And recently I had a beautiful engagement and entanglement with um, our sanctuary, our acreage that we have recently purchased and recently been co creating with Gaia when we the healing center um, for many beautiful healings for our divine sacred human family in Gaia. And I was being in joy and graciousness and being about the property and being about the beautiful land and soil and trees and moving about on the property um, and Gaia's offerings within the forest and being of such joy and being of such excitement and passion to be with her in a vibrational way. And as I walked with a divine open heart and just allowing the experiences to be as they were as they moved through me and touching the bark of the trees and feeling my feet upon the sands and the soils and the grass and the crystals as the water had frozen and the snow. And taking all of those in with every sense that I had in my multidimensional beingness through sight and sound and feeling and touch and hearing. And my field, my multidimensional fields were alive and I felt so impassioned just to be human and awake and alive and present with Gaia and God in all one moment. And a few days later, I was in a meditation and I had seen a beautiful part in the forest where the, the ground and the soil and the particles of the sand were moving up towards me as if it were a wave coming up towards me. And a beautiful being of water consciousness and a divine feminine energy was, was speaking to me simultaneously off to the side 
and explaining with me in the moment of my higher self and all the consciousness that I was entangled with in this meditation in my previous day journeys and in all of my journeys with Guy and all of my lifetimes threading, soul threading within me in that one moment, simultaneously sharing a story of vibration. And these grains of soil were coming up to show me. They were showing me not only what was in the soil and the elements in the soil, but they were showing me the water particles within those soil particles, those grains of sand, grains of sand if you will, that there was water within those elements of sand, of matter. And those water molecules were simultaneously speaking to the water molecules within my very body, the cellular matrices of my body. For we are composed and we are made up of in the chemistry of all that we are as divine beings of God light. So much of what we are is water. And we make this statement now with this poignant experience, an example that one of humanity's greatest rediscoveries will be the eternalness and the intelligence of water. And many of our most important discoveries will be in health and wellness around water and balancing of our human earthly dynamic, universal dynamic, will be held in these rediscoveries of water. And as I stood before this beautiful tree in the forest and the soils moving their way up to me as if a beautiful wave of remembrance through all of my earthly lifetimes, my akash and my, my sage and my, my shaman, shamanistic understandings and knowledge and wisdoms all coming to me in that one synchronistic moment, I realized that that beingness and that state of grace and that state of open-hearted childlike play that I experienced a few days prior was that quantum catalyst, that passionate ignition that allowed me to remember those quantum downloads that were always within my DNA, my RNA. They were always within my emotional and emotional mental fields, that being emotionally happy, being with Gaia. Those emotions never go anywhere. They st they're always with you. They can be reignited with other great moments of laughter and joy and passion and excitement to be you when you experience you in your fullest way when you're allowing you in your fullest way, no resistance. And in that moment of that beautiful water story, the water consciousness showing me that the water molecules, the God particles, <clears throat> were vibrationally talking. I was the conduit it was moving through. For I had acknowledged myself within it. I had allowed grace to be experienced within it. I allowed myself to be experienced within it. I felt myself as those water particles within the sand and the soil moving up through the roots of the tree and how the roots of the trees were sustained and maintained through these water particles, also a part of me. And how the water mo molecules were so intelligent, they were telling my body what was required for healing. What elements were, were feeling a bit short and how I could supplement them through cer certain things in my diet and what I would be eating or drinking. And the water molecule being of consciousness, the divine mother energy of the water consciousness was telling me and showing me, reminding me of my shamanic wisdoms, of my universality. For we understand most often than not that the physicality is illusory, allowing us to remember and to create our passions once again to be physical and how godly we are in our co-creations to be physical, and how we can manifest from thought, and how we can manifest from our quantum remembrances and passions and ignitions to be excited to be who we are in our God experience. How we are every part of that grain of sand and soil and roots and richness and texture of the bark. And you can find yourself in love, creating new stories and new songs and sounds, so that these new downloads and ignitions of grace as you find yourself within it all. And I was reminded in that moment, the intelligence in all things and how we have been taught as we experienced in our opening summation, the totality of our limitation is what we were always taught and told and how we were shown in school that if it wasn't breathing or growing, it wasn't alive. We beg to differ dear lighted ones for you have the opportunity here, right here and right now, to breathe in your eternal state of business, 
constantly moving, shifting, evolving, new cycles of growth and evolution. You can allow yourself to sense and feel and ignite new passions of business in all things. And how as you do, the aliveness of passion reminds you how profound you are, human form and all, earthly connection, entanglement and all. For it is within your entanglement, it is within your open-hearted engagement, it is within your ability and your willingness to be graceful within it all, for it is you that awakens you to more of you, that awakens you to the story of you, that awakens you to the story of you being that beautiful water molecule within the elemental groups and councils that feed through that soul threading upon the crystalline table on which that golden spark reminds you that the elementals and the councils of light and the angels of tone and sound and the angels of tone and color and in that moment that you walk through the forest that soul contract was remembered through that passion to be you Within your passion and self-love and self-acceptance and self-embrace and self-honor, self-jubilation. All of those soul threadings are allowed to continue with free-flowing movement. New cycles of growth. Do you see what we're saying here, dear lighted ones? And we're painting a picture for you. The excitement, the passion allows those soul threadings to open up and ever expand eternal, infinite dimensionality, omnipresence of you. For the elementals are involved in your soul contracts. The angels of sound are involved in your soul contracts. The ascended masters, the councils of the heavens, councils of light, councils of communication, councils of physics and spirituality councils of science and love, councils of celestial understanding, planetary movement, cosmic interstellar movement, passionate, infinite, eternal, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, threads, God, ever moving, ever spiraling, ever shifting, ever changing, ever awakening to new depths, new graciousness, new richness, new width, new perspectives, new gleaming memories of you within all things, and how are you following your excitement? Let go of let go of the past and manifest the reality you desire. It's time to expand your consciousness and create a new enlightened transformational you by raising your vibrational frequency. We will talk about ETs, light ships, the ascending human, our ascending planet, visitations, and first conscious contact upon our new fifth dimensional Earth. Welcome to Universal Unity new earth consciousness it's time to activate a better you by embracing the white light of source of source of source of source now your host and universal guide joanna l ross good morning good morning good morning this is joanna with universal unity and universal light wisdom and healing centers thank you so much for tuning in and i'm happy to be back i was away last week and um, we were visiting some family but i'm happy to be back and what a profound um, week it has been um, with energy, with our solstice energy, with our solstice unfolding. So thank you to our special um, 
um, our special gathering that we had this week on the 21st for winter solstice. And I hope that everyone had a chance to take time out and absorb and just be present with the divine and heavenly offerings of the 21st. And we always move within a couple of days of all of these special alignments, um, whether it's an equinox or a solstice or a full moon or new moon, um, changing of the seasons, if you will. So just know that you can take that time um, today and this evening as well, because it is the 23rd, um, and the 23rd still vibrates within the solstice energies and the solstice celestial offerings. And there's many things that um, will come forward in today's divine offering within the heavenly councils. Um, I was preparing very early this morning, and I've got about 12 pages that um, um, we've written in channeled form. And we're going to put them through in various recordings and other written posts because it's profound energy that really for me, it feels like a culmination, a, a review, if you will, a reflection, which is perfect because today um, equals the number nine. And the nine for me is a vibration of a highest vibrational frequency or signature, if you will, of singularity. Before we move into the uh, and embrace the, the, um, the openness and the unity of our one plus God self, and that's the number 10. But this number nine is our mastery story, the highest vibration of who we are in our singular form, therefore allowing ourselves to step beyond the veils of all limitation and illusion and separateness and step into the unity and unification and reunification of our universal oneness, our universal wholeness, our reunification with Mother, Father, God, with all that is. And so today's, so today's theme and within this solstice energy <clears throat> and in the beautiful gathering that we had this week, it was a really um, uh, a moment of um, um, it was really a hiatus, if you will, of the gathering of various energies and the gathering of various life lessons and soulful lessons, timeline lessons that many are now awakening to as they move into their universal expansiveness through the human and earthly ascension that we are all shifting within. The grounds beneath our feet are all shifting within the light and codations moving through each of us in our own unique perspectives, in our own unique awakenings, and in our own unique healings of those awakenings. And this solstice energy for me was quite, um, it was quite powerful in the way of our reunification and understanding of the sacred triad. Um, the sacred triad means many things, and it can mean many things, and it is supposed to mean many things. But in this particular vibration, we're going to allow the sacred triad to be um, the divine balance of mother, father, God with the son and the daughter. Um, and each of us carry that sacred triad. Within this sacred triad is also our divine complement that is the equal balance of our unique energies, each and every one of us individually and unique. And in this unity, in this story that we're unfolding within, we've realized and we've come to the culmination, we've come to the mastery in our singularity vibration and truly owning and truly creating that sense of self-passion and self-purpose and self-grace within the passion of our human experience, within the passion of our human joy to be human, to be on this earthly ride, within this earthly ride. And that's what our topics for today are. And we're gonna cover a lot of information. Whatever I don't cover in this show, um, it is very, very um, key and important um, in the human ascension um, paradigm. So if we don't cover it within the show today, we will be doing a full written expose and excerpt of um, these channelings because for me it was just poignant and I just kept writing poignancy after poignancy of these epiphanies that I've gained through my own awakening through every single person, <laughs> every single soul family member, every child within my experience, every remembrance um, that has come forward through me. And it's truly about the human journey in and of itself. Consciousness, consciousness and create a new enlightened transformational you by raising your vibrational frequency we will talk about ets light ships the ascending human our ascending planet visitations and first conscious contact upon our new fifth dimensional earth welcome to universal unity new earth consciousness it's time to activate a better you by embracing the white light of source. Of source. Of source. Of source. Now your host and universal guide, Joanna L. Ross. Back. I'm back. This is 
Joanna from Universal Unity and Universal Light Wisdom Healing Center. Thank you so much for tuning in again and allowing us to to um, offer and allowing us to flow within the divine heavenly offerings of what we know to be about passion and what we need um, within our own state of awareness, our unique individuality, who we are as unique beings of light, who we are as passionate um, conduits of light, of God essence, of God exploration, which is exactly what each and every one of us are. As we've talked about so many times, the particles of God light, each, of, each and every one of us are particles holographically, beautiful God golden particles of light sent forward through various dimensional realities and various dimensional veils of density and separation, if you will, from the universal source center. The farther out of the reaches of our universe and the omnipresence that we move allows us to experience greater vastness of separation and density and limitation. And it's been an incredible and beautiful sojourn. It truly has. And so allow anything that unfolds in the daily activity, allow anything that unfolds in our earthly human collective activity to be one of celebration and exaltation for all those things being brought to the surface, although it might cause us exhaustion at times, for they have been eons in the making of the male and female imbalances and why we see unfolding what we do in our society. Any belief system that we have had, any roles that we have played within those belief systems are coming forward to be rebalanced, so celebrate. Any experience that we have unfolding within our dynamic human family, celebrate. For your awakening and your awareness of every moment, now you find yourself graciously within it all, is to be celebrated. And seek the passion within it that ignites a new download or a new remembrance of your shamanistic skills or wisdoms or intelligences or your star galactic inventiveness coming to life so that you may serve within a new moment of human passionateness to come forward and create through that passion. For we see this in our children, do we not? When they are excited to create, they are in their God passion. Whether it be through divine inventiveness of electronics that will serve humanity in a new way, whether it be through their art and their creativity or their voice or their song, in all that they experience and explore as passion, it's the God in them coming to life. And how we are the conduit, we are the vessel of all passion of all things God. For the passion of God is movement of creation. As we said earlier, God's desire to experience love in new ways. Each and every one of us were breathed anew. And out to creation we flowed. Mother, Father, God, so excited and so passionate to experience the farthest reaches the expansiveness of evolution, ever pushing forward, ever pushing more expansive out through the cosmos, through every corner of our omnipresence that is truly beyond our imagining. But we've taken ourselves from thinking about who we are in this physical body and the limitations that we've held within ourselves and we've expanded to understand that we have cosmic family. We've taken ourselves to understand that we have universal family we're now allowing ourselves to muse and playfully conjure who we are multidimensionally. <clears throat> and you can inspire new passions by being within your presence and thinking about what does it feel like to be multiverse? How do I feel moving within the multiverse? How do I feel within my omnipresence of now? and muse about these expansive concepts. Feel the passion igniting within you to be human and bring those soul threadings, those soul gifts, those soul awakenings, those God passions forward to be lived through you. <clears throat> and this topic about the passion of being human and the, the, the idea and the concept of what passion means, how God was passionate for each and every one of us, without even knowing us, but just as every child is born, 
we have a passion to feel the love of a child, to be the love of a child, to experience ourselves through the love of a child. We have no idea what the child will look like or be like or seem like or have those creative, co-creative contracts and experiences. We have no idea. But we create love out of love, out of the joy, the experience, the passion of it. And so our children are extensions of us, as we are extensions of Mother, Father, God, as we are extensions of the Divine Heavenly Councils, and so on and so forth within your soul blueprint, as you're allowing yourself to remember. And these soul excitements, the movement of creation, the evolutionary flow and fluidity that you're allowing yourself to soak within, allowance, surrender, and flow. The breath of life, the quantum particles, all conjoining and magnetizing in vibrational resonance. You create passion for yourself and you magnetize and you conjoin particles of vibrational resonance as Metatron has taught us. You set the vibration. Are you passionate about who you are? Are you falling in love with who you are? Are you allowing the children, are you allowing those around you to fall in love with who they are? Or are you moving within familiar behaviors and egoic patternings that limit and control? For many of us, our parents, and many of us know that's what we've been brought up on. And oftentimes, we only do the best that we know. Oftentimes, it's very limiting. And we use controlling behaviors and we lose controlling ways of acting and moving about life, perpetuating limitation, perpetuating control perpetuating lack of creativity. But in this multidimensional concept of passion, we bring our children into the picture. As God experiences passion and ever expands creation out, ever expands love out, ever expands unity and oneness out, humanity is awakening to this. Every aspect of our reality will be touched by the essence of God, of passion. Passion is within the sacred geometry that we are breathing within light and codations, light language, breath. Passion, graciousness, self-love, self-embrace, self-excitement. And our children, through my own personal experiences, through my own personal observations, and these are my personal musings that I bring forward, so that we may create these co-creative discussions and dialogues, so that we may expand within them, so that we may bring ourselves to an expanded resolve and continue the ever-expansive movement into passion, compassionate awareness, compassionate action and understanding. In my own personal observation, in my own personal being as a mother, as my own personal being as a vibrational teacher and healer, in my own remembrances and my own shamanic beginnings and my own shamanic musings, I have noticed that within my own family circle, that within my own experiences, our children as well, my children as well, move through those moments of profound lack of self-clarity and lack of self-doubt, lack of confidence in such a profound way. And I have found through my own discovery and my own self-examination and my own self-musings and these movements of experience with my family and my children, that they too come here with profound self-purpose and sense of divinity within themselves, more so than we ever did. For their crystalline children, their hybrid children of a special form. However, we say special in the way that only to use this as explanation, but not to have them feel different in a way that they cannot connect with their human brethren. And this is how it's been used and observed in our human reality. And there's nothing, there's no judgment about that. But we're bringing this up so that we may move into an expansive unity, an expansive act of passion within all that we are as unique individuals and what we offer as unique individuals in our oneness. But remember, it's always a balance our divinity and our individuation, bringing forward our unity in what we offer as a one, as a whole. And that's what we're learning. That's what we're remembering. That's what we're rebalancing. That's what we're healing. Our children come with this and ain't knowing this already. Our children come with the crystalline signatures and their encodations and their desire to help. 
their desire to be threaded within this common greater good. And those that are parents, you can allow yourself to soak within these beautiful new experiences and these beautiful new um, experiments, if you will, of loving passion. And ask your children questions. Ask your children um, open-ended questions of dialogue and exploration and examining so that they come forward with their own creative desire to remember their purpose, their soul threading, their soul requirement, their soul necessity to be here, to be passionate about being human in their specialness. And we may have to listen to this a few times, but it will make sense. But we are saying the same thing just in different ways, in different words, so that those are parents those that are guardians, those that are caretakers, can understand that these children have come here with a propensity to serve. Their inner knowing, that ache that they have within them to serve at a much earlier age than we ever did. I came here as a crystalline child, so I felt the urgency. I felt the need and the desire to be a part of this grand picture that I saw nothing of in my outer reality. It was very hard for me to understand and discern what I was experiencing. For I felt the innateness of God, of oneness, of unity within me, and yet I had no way of experiencing in my outer reality what I saw, what I experienced, what I felt, what I heard. These children come here with the same knowingness. However, it's amplified become they, because they've come here in a collective consciousness that is now awakened. So their oscillation, their resonance factor, if you will, is heightened than it was when I was born in 1969. I'm giving this to you as an example because I understand how it feels. I can put together the pieces of the puzzle. I can put together the pieces of this human journey and have great celebration and passion for it. For I've allowed myself the grace through all these experiences to come forward and teach in a new way. These vibrational healings, these vibrational offerings, dear lighted ones, We're creating a new sense of our human collective counseling with one another. To understand that these children come with a propensity to serve, a propensity to know their sole purpose, a propensity to understand within themselves that they are required. They are a passionate exploration of God light in motion. And how our role as parents is not to limit them, is not to punish them for their behavior of creativity or their behavior of acting out of society boundaries, acting out of societal norms, not following direction of school, whatever it may be. But to go within and find your graciousness within the experience, for there's a lesson within it for you. To come forward and say, for you to own your human sovereignty, for you to be in joy and in passion with who you are as a human, for you to ground and anchor your celebration of being human, your celebration of being God in human form, requires that you accept all of you. Those moments where you are impatient or judgmental, and you find the grace within it, and you forgive, and you let go, and you create that cycle of healing. And we allow our children to understand this as well, that they've come here with profound purpose to create in whatever way they're passionate to do so, without hindrance, without limitation, without banishment or isolation. For they will come with profound inventiveness and creativity that goes beyond what we can imagine. For we are here to empower and inspire and set the safe boundaries and the safe guidelines for them to explore within. To remember their innate God purpose. And I have found with my own children that they go through profound moments of Akashic clearing. They come here with Akashic resolve. They must walk through Akashic resolve. They must walk through their Akash, their karmic learnings, if you will. Their karmic lessons. To be physical, to be in this density, they must walk through those karmic lessons. Those karmic lessons they take on from the collective that they're sown with, the other collective children of their age. 
for they come as a collective birthing, just as we did in our age. We are birthing into a new age of humanness, a new age of behavior, a new age of potentiality. Do you see where we're going with this, dear lighter ones? Particles of God passion, moving into the collective age of awareness, the age of Aquarian, the age of fluidity, the age of washing, the age of smoothing over, the age of allowance and fluidity to flow in God passion. And these beautiful children have the innate desire and the ache to remember the requiredness here, to remember that they're a part of a beautiful soul family farther than they can see and feel and why they get so excited when they get on the electromagnetic social sites. They can connect with beings of their age and they might not understand it at the time. And it might be completely unrelated to spirituality or their sole purpose. But they feel good in that connection. They feel good in that threading. And it's about us to perceive things in a new way. To allow them the empowerment and the inspiration and reminding them every moment that they're here for profound reasons. Their passionate soul plan is to explore it and experience it for themselves. That's how they move through their karmic lessons. To experience and remind themselves of their God potential. To experience their passions in art, in sound, in music, in nature, in inventiveness. For they will remember their quantum science at the earliest of ages. Our role is just to allow them the opportunity and safe ways to explore all things of excitement. Remind them at every moment they're here for profound reasons. I say it for my children every day. For I see the difference in their energy. I see the difference in the way that they behave. I see the difference in the way that they feel about themselves as purposeful. For is that not all of humanity's desire as a collective family to know that we belong? That's why we're always searching. Searching for different religions. They're searching through different material outside things. The Mother, Father, God just to reach out and say, you've been with us all the time. You're purposeful. You're a cog in the creational wheel, and we need you. This family needs you. They need you. You're worthy. You're so required in this dance. Make no mistake about it, for as far as your soul contract reaches. And I'm here to assure you, dear lighted ones, your heavenly contracts reach farther and wider and deeper and higher than you will ever know. Passionately explore these musings of eternalness with your children. Tell them that their branches and soul threadings and roots as the tree of life, as the flower of life that they are, reaches farther than they will ever know, deeper and wider than they will ever know, and their gifts are so expansive and beautiful. They are a passionate spark of God, as you are, sent forward to create. And they have unique gifts, they have unique encodings, and they will bloom in their own unique timing. They will blossom and come forward as the beautiful flower of life that they are. And it's not for us to hurry it. It's not for us to force it. It's not for us to judge it, to be critical of it, to want it to be any other way, but to find grace within their experience, for their experience is also teaching and expanding you and expanding the all within it. Is it not? Do you see the vibrations of this powerful frequency, dear lighted ones? How our passion to be all that we are in human form can ripple and flow and overflow within the diamond light that it is, that it was breathed within, that we were breathed within, that our children were breathed within, how each and every one of us have a cosmic role to play, 
a passionate role to play. And I had a recent experience and why I bring this forward because it's so very telling about the children of today and how they're so attuned in different ways. And even though they might not be consciously aware of the terms that we use in awakening or how it's all threaded together, but these children are vibrationally awake and aware. And it's about us posing questions and dialogue and exploration and examination and passionate play and sacred play in a way that stimulates their reminding of themselves of their godliness. They remember within themselves of their soul purpose. They remember within themselves that they are unique and they are profound and they are meant to be here. And so many of them feel at a very early age that they want to just check out. And many of them turn to barbiturates or opiates or drugs. Many of them choose different aspects of, of, of highs, if you will as I did in my growing up. It was a portal. It was a way that I could feel liberated. It was a way that I could feel the freedom that I wanted to feel. It was a way, it was a portal or a path that only I could experience in the way that I could. For there was nothing around me that showed me or told me or allowed me to remember the essence of God that I knew was existing within. The platforms weren't there. The empowerment, the inspirations weren't there. Or so I thought. The creative freedom and liberation that I so desired. That passionate feel to be entangled with life in all ways, to be connected with the water and the soil and the grass and the bark and the trees and the birds. I knew I loved wildlife. I knew I loved nature. But it was never explained to me in the elegance and the intricacies that were available. The awakening wasn't there. These children ache for the intricacies and the elegance of energy. For they understand it's God. They understand it's them, they get it. My children are so in love with their stuffies and their friends and they feel as if they're alive and they give consciousness and awareness to them. And they feel that way when they go into nature and they interact with animals. They give that same blessing and that same passion to their stuffies what we feel are inanimate objects that are not alive, not consciousness. But we see this beautiful interplay of love and care between my children and their stuffies or my children and wildlife or my children and nature. They already know there's God within it. Do you see what we're saying here, dear lighted ones? So allow this exploration of play. Allow this exploration of consciousness and love in all things. For they find their purpose within it. They find their deep passions within it. And my youngest son, he's such a beautiful caretaker of his, he calls them his little ones. And he's only six. But he has such dynamic creative play with his little ones. He goes far off into his multidimensional musings and he writes stories and he writes books about these beautiful experiences and journeys that he goes on with his little ones. And his biggest, grandest desire one day is to have them beautifully come to life and share his his beautiful experiences and his beautiful journeys and his sojourns. And I tell him, I said, they're already experiencing it with you. They're already with you. It's a consciousness story you're allowing yourself to go on because there's a gift within it for you. Your passion's within it. Explore, examine, play. And when I remind my children, because I see they're down and I see they feel disconnected from their society, I see them disconnected with the electronics, I see them disconnected in how they talk to one another, how they treat one another, because it's being emulated in the parents and in the families. It's being emulated within the society, every channel you turn to, the shows that we watch, how competition and greed and control and all of these things that we've experienced for so many eons, we're now putting to the test. We're now bringing forward because it's out of balance. And we're bringing it all back in and we explain in simple ways that children can understand. What we see come forward is what we see to heal, is what we see to create a sense of balance with it. And you're here to be a part of that. You're here to be a part of this rebalancing. 
you're a, a required part of this beautiful, divine, and heavenly human journey that we all find great passion in and why God brought you forth. Can you feel your passion and excitement to be human, to connect with other human children, to connect with other human adults and share your creative expressiveness, to share your creative joy? Can you feel the excitement to be you again? Can you feel your requirement to be here for your special and we need you? And allowing our children to remember their requirement, allowing our children to remember their validity, their existence is so special. And it shifts their energy quite innately and quite quickly, for they get it, for they've heard the words of God, for those vibrations speak to them. For I understand the vibration of sound, your lighted ones. And I've seen it, I've experienced it within my family, within my children, within others. And why we do vibrational healing and vibrational teaching, for all words carry vibration. All soft intention to be open with your heart, to be the most purely loving being that you can, just to open that and offer it. And however it will unfold is perfect and divine, and you'll find grace within it. And oftentimes there doesn't need to be an intention any other than being loving, and being open and just being your passion itself. And all things will unfold divinely. But for our children, it is wise to know that they come here with these innate propensities to serve, with these innate desires to be linked and connected with their divine soul purpose. Not that they have to know at an early age what it is they're gonna do or be, but for them just to be excited to explore all that they are as the God passion that they were brought here with. They were breathed by God passion as we were. And I've seen a difference in how my children behave when I allow them to be reminded of their soul purpose. And I tell them as often as I want to hear it as a child of God, as my teams tell me as Divine Mother, Father, my divine compliment tell me often. But we've never really been told that or allowed ourselves to create a human community and a soul community that's empowered one another to know our specialness, our uniqueness. So we're gifting it to ourselves in our self-love. We're gifting it to ourselves in our self-healing. We understand the process, don't we? We understand how to rebalance and heal, don't we? We've talked about the multidimensional bodies, the emotional bodies, the physical bodies, the intelligence that we carry within and the etheric. All of these bodies the children have as well. They're requiring their emotional requiredness, their emotional ability to release their Akashic lessons, their karmic lessons. And for us to allow, not to change or correct it or fix it, but to allow their processing as well. Because as we allow their processing, those particles of God are raised to an expanded vibration as the cycle of evolution continues. Just as your karmic releases are allowed to be brought forward through your self-love, through your self-healing, through your self-seeking and self-expansiveness, those particles are released from your chakras, sent spiraling, come forward to you in your everyday activity and show itself to you so that you can create expanded awareness and expanded choices. That's how you gain your mastery moment for moment for moment. We've talked about this in all of our shows. So that we repeat it enough so that you understand as we begin to shift our human perspective our human paradigm is shifting, dear lighted ones, in which we now create an understanding as parents, as guardians, as adults, as masters of light, and we shift the perspective so that we are consciously creating a platform for the children and future generations of light. For we've been moving upon this ascension journey with very individualistic perspectives because that's what we've required we've needed that for our own personal healing but i see in 2018 and coming years a growing perspective a growing awareness and growing soul tribes gathering all over the globe here and there and pockets of beautiful soul families coming together in the innate awareness of healing the human family creating beautiful temples of light and temples of healing and temples of awareness and temples of just sacred sharing of passionate stories of joy and creativity. 
going outside the box with education, going outside the box with our creative sovereignty and our Christed essence so that we may experience and dance and color and sing and do all that we're excited to do as passioned human children. But our excitement and our, our, our soul expression now will be shifting so that we create a sense of altruism to our human family for future generations in this now moment. The moment of light that we create through ourselves, through our own self-passion, is creating the light fields and the platform for these beautiful crystalline children, these hybrid children on and off world, to play as Christed essence. So that the cycle of evolution, the threat of our expansiveness in the omnipresence, and the passion of Mother, Father, God to be experienced in all ways, moves through the portal of our human experience in ways that are truly undeniable and unexplainable. For we get it. We get the idea and the concept of having passion for this human ride. We get the idea and the concept for experiencing the passion of all that we are and opening the platform to our children so that they may too experience the passion in themselves to experience all that they are as divine children of light. So that they may go forward in their lives and create inventiveness. So they may go forward in their lives and create profound healings that we've never seen or experienced or explored. And we're here to create that platform. We're here to create that altruistic vibration of love and light as a community, as a family. So that each and every one of us, seven billion plus, may forever know within the open hearts of all that they are, that each and every one of us are required. Each and every one of us have a profound role. Each and every one of us have profound mandates, have profound soul contracts that span far beyond what we can understand, see, or know. But as we open up to this beautiful self-acceptance and self-liberation, finding the passion within all that we are, that passion is flow, that God flow that we've been talking about, the breath of life, the web and the ebb and the flow of creation that evolution moves on is flow, it's movement. Those vibrational movements allow expansiveness in all directions, in all ways, in all dimensions, in all threads. And the children can feel it. The children can sense it. Yes, there's excitement going on within the house. What's going on? Well, I'm here for a reason. I know I am. I'm experiencing something new every day. I just thought of something new. I had this beautiful experience in the woods, and I just found out I've got a new passion. What do you think about that? Let's talk about this. Wow, I had a similar experience. I had a dream just the other day. And then we start these expansive dialogues and communications in which they rediscover a new passion, a new service. And then we begin to bring other children in, and we begin to say, well, if, if, if there's this, this, this potential within our human collective to create water, great water for everyone, how may we do this? What do you think? What are some excitements and passions that we have with one another? And watch the wheels of creation, watch the wheels of God passion, watch the God particles start to spiral within those conversations. See where we're going with this, dear lighted ones. Passion is the ignition, passion is the inspiration, passion is the web in which all growth flows quite naturally, seamlessly, innately, naturally, organically. We're here to inspire it, we're here to set the stage vibrationally. For all children of, of any age, no matter where they're at in their path, we all require that, that open heart oneness with Mother, Father, God to say we're all needed, we're all required. We each have a special gift that will add to the soul threadings. And as we showed you that vision of the infinite soul threading that your blueprint carries, and how each soul threading is a different skill, a different memory, a different Akashic threading brought to you from the star system, brought to you from your consciousness that you hold, brought through you from the light consciousness that you hold in the angelic realms or whatever it is that soul threading is igniting because you are the all. These children also have their unique soul threadings that go through the omnipresence of all things and why they can be inspired in any way in any moment. 
But these soul threadings, these soul experiences, these soul excitements, these soul passions are God particles in motion. And we're, we're allowing ourselves to be ignited with one another through our sacred sharing, through our sacred soul tribe sharing every time we gather. Regardless of where you're located, the omnipresence is the omnipresence, consciousness at heart. And each and every one of us desire to know that we belong. That's why we go seeking in all things outer. Until we figure it out that outer is never where it's at. It's always within. And everyone's awakening process, everyone's awakening story will eventually lead them to that place within. Where all passions come to life. For it's God in all things. It's you in all things. That relationship, that sacred triad coming to life, new flow, new stories, new essences of you with God in a new way. And you step up to that vibrational platform and that vibrational dimensional reality, one plus God, you and the God in all things. As our children are ready to explore and examine and become a part of, they remember their expansiveness within nature and allowing them that open field to play, allowing them that open potentiality to see what nature means to them, what water means to them, the vibrational intelligence within water and how they can program their water as they drink it, how they can infuse their water and their food with beautiful intentions of love and grace and open up to the passions of who they are in the most magnificent of ways through us, through them, through our family, our human family. Our children not only come with the propensity to serve in their grand soul purpose and their, their unity consciousness that they already come with, they already are linked and entangled with it, and why they feel so affected by, by, um, by groups and circles that they're in that aren't necessarily awake or vibrating in certain ways. And it's not to create separateness, it's not to create dissension within it, but it's for them to empower themselves within to know that we are all one, they know it, for them to create acceptance. For we've all created separation in so many eons of human life. And we've created ourselves to separate ourselves from what we don't resonate with. And that just perpetuates separation. But we can allow them to see a more expanded, unified field, which is what we all exist within, just occurring at different vibrational levels, Vibration will sort itself out. Make no mistake about it. You don't have to force it or do it. Vibration will sort itself out. You will attract the vibration of whatever it is you are. So allow the children to know their mastery in that. Vibration will sort itself out. But in the meantime, there is an experience showing itself to you for the lesson and the blessing and the graciousness within it. So pause. Take a breath. And how is the passion of God showing you this lesson? Showing you your eternalness within the challenge, within the struggle, within the strife, within others. And you're one. You don't have to run and hide. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of the earth unfolding. You don't have to be afraid of whatever unfolds for humanity. For there is the divine unfolding and orchestration of vibrations and they will sort themselves out. And it will all be divinely perfect within each soul contract. Make no mistake about that. We've shown you the profundity of orchestration many, many times, dear lighted ones. Let go of the worry. It is our role now to build altruism. It is our role now to build empowerment and self-clarity about who we are as divine children of God, for our children, for future children. For in this altruistic perspective, they allow themselves to see that they can stand firm within their light and bring all in to be loved and made whole. Not to separate it, not to create dissension or separateness within it. To see the story and the wisdom and the blessing within it. To know that they can rise above and transcend any limitation or any belief. And yet create sovereignty so that there is allowance and there's no longer separation them against us. For we've had enough of that, dear lighted ones. We're going beyond. We're setting new platforms of light. We're setting new platforms of light field appreciation for who we are in oneness, not in separation. 
And I'll give you an example. This is a beautiful ancient memory that came forward through um, a beautiful discussion and a dialogue that I had one day. And there was an ancient culture um, that I was a part of. And this beautiful ancient culture, very, very ancient, very ancient culture that I was a part of. And I can see this memory comes to me often when I'm moving through um, healings and concepts of the Akash memory, the cellular memory that we hold within our DNA, our RNA, those cellular memories of all moments in which every single one of us have experienced separation, where every single one of us have experienced isolation. We've played all the roles. We've played all the players. We've been the ones separating. We've been the ones that were separated. We've been the ones isolating. We've been the ones that were isolated. We've played every role. Our entire human society is healing this one collective cosmic lesson. Reunification of oneness with creation. In this ancient culture, many, many ancient tribes in general, every being that was born into that tribe, every baby, every infant that was born into that tribe, there was an awareness within that tribe that every being within that tribe had a special purpose, had a role that they were playing, that they offered, that they brought forward to the tribe as the collective offering, as the collective gift to that tribe. If you can imagine within this beautiful ancient tribe and this, this, this beautiful gathering around a fire, and this fire symbolizes many things, and we'll go into that in a minute, but it's important that we see the fire in the middle. And around the fire is this beautiful sacred tribe communion, the sacred ceremony of this birthing of this beautiful child into this tribe. The heavens were aligned. Celestial alignments were made. Equinoxes and solstices. All things were a part of this soul contract coming into play. God so passionate to create and experience love in a new way. This was known by this birthing. This was celebrated and created ceremony around this birthing as this being was brought into this tribe, into this new earthly experience. Created those special tribal ceremonies in the special tribal ways and sacred stories were shared throughout this child life. And this child had a sense of belonging. This child had a sense of innateness within this sacred tribe. All things that that child knew, they were a part of that sacred circle. They were a part of that threading and they were told, you're a part of our sacred tribe. We love you. We honor you. We require you. You are required within this sacred soul tribe. Do you sense your passion within? Do you sense the godness within you? You're here for a reason. You'll find it out on your own. You'll explore that within your own excitement. You'll explore that within your own innateness. But just trust. God has a plan for you. You're required here. And every moment of that child's life, through the experiences, through the exploration down the path that that child had, always knew that it belonged within this sacred soul tribe. However, one day something was different. One day in that sacred soul family gathering and the fire was burning bright, there was one of its tribe members that was not facing inwards. The tribe member was facing outwards. And the essence of unity began to be frayed. The ideologies of Unity began to be frayed. Everyone began to question their sense of unity. Everyone began to question their sense of oneness. And then the next month, the next week, the next year, another member was turned outwards. And then another member, and then another member, and then another member. And by the time you know it, wars broke out between tribes. Tribes began to fight against tribes. Rumblings within the earth began to rumble. And all things connected began to get frayed. And the stories of unity began to get lost. Stories of oneness began to get lost. And the fire still sits. The fire still burns. The fire representing source creator. The fire representing the fire of passion of mother, father, God. That red crimson ember of creation, of life, of the passion to create, that warmth, the unity that it experiences in love and unity and oneness and sacred sharing, sacred gathering. And Mother, Father, God reminds us in every moment 
that regardless of what any one being in that sacred family are moving through, we bring it in and love it. To create the flow of unconditional love, regardless, we bring it in and we'll show you that you're required and you're needed. And it may feel in that moment that you're not. And many of us have wanted to check out. Many of us have wanted to feel and experience the isolation that we felt. We just wanted to check out physically, emotionally. And that's what sometimes, oftentimes, these these movements into um, drugs and alcohol make us feel emotionally like we're checking out. Because what we see around us seems that way at times. And we can unconditionally take a step forward and we can expand our hearts and say that without judgment, I accept you. You're honored within our community. You're honored within your sacredness and your role and your purpose is here. Within the heart of Mother, Father, God, you are required. Therefore, you are required within the unity of all that we are. And just as the Arcturians in their communities and in their cultures, that I'm reminded that when there's, when there's sensings and vibrations of children and sensings and vibrations of adults, for that matter, that are straying from their highest vibration of intent, that there's immediately sent those vibrational healers and teachers in the highest vibrational resonance to move in and support altruistically to create communion and to create sanctity and and required support and in doing so they're realigned with their belonging so it's what we all want isn't it to know that we belong with one another we're meant for better and higher and more expansive play in our oneness And why the pain that any one being goes through ripples to the pain in all of us. For we feel when you're separate and isolated. And we don't want you to turn your back. For we love you. And this fire requires you to be a part of the whole. Come and play, come and play. Face your hearts towards the fire of creation. Let go of the past and manifest the reality you desire. It's time to expand your consciousness and create a new enlightened transformational you by raising your vibrational frequency. We will talk about ETs, light ships, the ascending human, our ascending planet, visitations, and first conscious contact upon our new fifth dimensional Earth. Welcome to Universal Unity, New Earth Consciousness, it's time to activate a better you by embracing the white light of source. Of source. Of source. Of source. Now your host and universal guide, Joanna L. Ross. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Joanna with Universal Unity and Universal Light Wisdom and Healing Centers. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'm happy to be back. I was away last week and um, we were visiting some family, but I'm happy to be back and what a profound um, week it has been. Um, with energy, with our solstice energy, with our solstice unfolding. So thank you to our special um, um, our special gathering that we had this week on the 21st for winter solstice. And I hope that everyone had a chance to take time out and absorb and just be present with the divine and heavenly offerings of the 21st. And we always move within a couple of days of all of these special alignments, um, whether it's an equinox or a solstice or a full moon or new moon, um, changing of the seasons, if you will. So just know that you can take that time um, today and this evening as well, because it is the 23rd, um, and the 23rd still vibrates within the solstice energies and the solstice celestial offerings. And there's many things that um, will come forward in today's divine offering within the heavenly councils. Um, I was preparing very early this morning, and I've got about 12 pages that um, um, we've written in channeled form. And we're going to put them through in various recordings and other written posts, because it's profound energy that really, for me, it feels like a culmination, a, a review, if you will, a reflection, which is perfect, because today um, equals the number nine. And the nine, for me, is a vibration of a highest vibrational frequency or signature, if you will, of singularity. Before we move into the uh, and embrace the the um, the openness and the unity of our one plus God self, and that's the number ten. 
But this number nine is our mastery story, the highest vibration of who we are in our singular form, therefore allowing ourselves to step beyond the veils of all limitation and illusion and separateness and step into the unity and unification and reunification of our universal oneness, our universal wholeness, our reunification with Mother, Father, God, with all that is. And so today's, so today's theme, and within this solstice energy, <clears throat> and in the beautiful gathering that we had this week, it was a really um, uh, a moment of, um, um, it was really a hiatus, if you will, of the gathering of various energies and the gathering of various life lessons and soulful lessons, timeline lessons, that many are now awakening to as they move into their universal expansiveness through the human and earthly ascension that we are all shifting within. The grounds beneath our feet are all shifting within the light and codations moving through each of us in our own unique perspectives, in our own unique awakenings, and in our own unique healings of those awakenings. And this solstice energy for me was quite, um, it was quite powerful in the way of our reunification and understanding of the sacred triad. Um, the sacred triad means many things and it can mean many things and it is supposed to mean many things. But in this particular vibration, we're going to allow the sacred triad to be um, the divine balance of mother, father, God with the son and the daughter. Um, and each of us carry that sacred triad. Within this sacred triad is also our divine complement that is the equal balance of our unique energies, each and every one of us individually and unique. And in this unity, in this story that we're unfolding within, we've realized and we've come to the culmination, we've come to the mastery in our singularity vibration and truly owning and truly creating that sense of self-passion and self-purpose and self-grace within the passion of our human experience, within the passion of our human joy to be human, to be on this earthly ride, within this earthly ride. And that's what our topics for today are. And we're going to cover a lot of information. Whatever I don't cover in this show, um, it is very, very um, key and important um, in the human ascension um, paradigm. So if we don't cover it within the show today, we will be doing a full written expose and excerpt of um, these channelings because for me it was just poignant and I just kept writing poignancy after poignancy of these epiphanies that I've gained through my own awakening through every single person, <laughs> every single soul family member, every child within my experience, every 